This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I'm going to show you how to move your Bitcoin or your Bitcoin private keys from your Ledger hardware wallet to your Jade hardware wallet. The basic steps are this. You install Sparrow Wallet on your laptop or desktop. You get your new Blockstream Jade hardware wallet ready with a brand new 12 word recovery seed. You connect the Jade to Sparrow. You generate a receive address using your Jade, and then you send some Bitcoin over from Ledger to that receive address on your Jade. I've already covered how to download the Sparrow wallet. Make sure you're using the correct URL and I'll link to this video in the description notes below where I talk about how to install Sparrow. The next step is to buy a Blockstream Jade hardware wallet. In this case, I would never buy a hardware wallet from a reseller. There are some resellers listed at the top here. I would buy it instead directly from the store at Blockstream. Also never buy a used hardware wallet on Amazon or anywhere else because it could be loaded with some malware or bad hardware. Always buy directly from the company itself, whether it's Blockstream Jade or cold card. Preferably use a pseudonym. It depends really how far you want to take this. Use a pseudonym, ship it to a PO box, paid for with Bitcoin, not a credit card. These are extra privacy steps that you may or may not want to take. When the hardware wallet arrives in the mail, when the Jade arrives, inspect the packaging for tampering and then always generate a new recovery seed. I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. Your recovery seed is the human readable version of your private keys. And it's a 12 or 24 words arranged in a certain order. Always generate a new one when you get a new hardware wallet, because if you reuse the same recovery seed, so for example, if you just import your ledger recovery seed into your new Blockstream Jade, you've really defeated the whole purpose of this. If you reuse that same recovery seed, you're wasting your time because your recovery seed is your Bitcoin. In other words, it's not actually your Bitcoin, which is just a notation on the blockchain, but your recovery seed is a representation of your private keys. And if anyone has those private keys, has that recovery seed, they can steal your Bitcoin by moving it to another Bitcoin address that they control the keys to. So please, please, please do not use your old recovery seed from your ledger or from your treasure or from anything else on your new Jade. I'm gonna to link to a Jade overview in the description notes below. And now I'm gonna show you how to set up the Jade and connect it to Sparrow. So the first thing you wanna do is update to the latest firmware when you get your Jade. I'm going to be using this through the USB port of my desktop. There's also a way of doing this using QR codes. I believe it's a little more difficult. Basically, these hardware wallets, they securely store your private seed offline inside the hardware wallet. And so even if it's plugged into the USB port, you should be fine. Cold card takes us a step further where you can use little micro SD cards and pass the information back and forth. But I believe it's safe to plug this in to a USB port and we don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. So right now I have my new Blockstream Jade, it's plugged in. I wanna show you a few things here on the side. We have the green button, that's the power button. This is being powered through the USB port of my computer. We have the select button, which is right here. And then we have a toggle on top that we can use to switch between things. So the first step is to click, go to this uh, website, uh, jadefw.blockstream. I'll link to it in the description notes below. And we're gonna click update your Jade. And we're gonna update to the no radio version. So we don't, we don't want Bluetooth enabled. So we'll click on this. This is the latest stable version that is no radio, no Bluetooth. We'll confirm the vision, uh, confirm the version. And I believe I need to do this on my, yeah, it says preparing for firmware update on the Jade itself. And now it's updating the firmware. Actually, before it starts updating, what I need to do is I need to select that I want to do the upgrade. So I'm gonna to toggle the switch here to the check mark, and then I'm gonna select that, and that will tell it to start upgrading the firmware to the latest version. Now that we've upgraded the firmware, we can finish setting up the Jade. So I'm gonna click the button on top here to select set up Jade. I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna click begin setup. I'm gonna click create new wallet. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna generate my new 12 word recovery seed using a random number generator inside the hardware wallet. I'll click continue. And this is my 12 word recovery seed, sometimes called a recovery phrase. It's uh, a number of words here. I'm actually going to show these and um, not really put any Bitcoin in there. But what you wanna do is write these down in the order that they are shown here. And you can toggle to the next screen and then you can toggle to the next screen and write down all 12 words in that order. And then it's gonna test us after we do this. I'll be right back after I write down these words. 
Okay, now that I've written down all 12 words in the order that's specified, I'm going to click to continue to the next screen. And now it's going to ask me to confirm various words. So for example, word 11 is master. So I'm going to use the toggle, toggle here to master, then press the select button. Now it's going to ask me to confirm word number 10, which is air. I'll toggle through and select air. And I'm going to continue doing this and come back to show you the screen when I'm all done. Okay, it looks like I successfully passed the test entering in my recovery seeds. It only asked me for a couple of them, but this is to make sure that you've written them down correctly. And if you want to be smart, uh, you should also stamp them into a metal plate. There are various uh, steel plates, etc., that you can order online in case your house is uh, destroyed by fire or flood or something like that. But now we're going to proceed. This is connected using the USB port, so I will select that. And now it says connect J to a compatible wallet app. Before you start all of this, I forgot to mention that you should have Sparrow uh, up and running. So I'll put Sparrow's open here, and this is how it's going to be able to sense that uh, there's a, a compatible app that the hardware wallet can be used with. I'm gonna go here and click New Wallet. I'm gonna give it a name. Then I'm gonna click Create Wallet. And now the next step is to, you can see here on the Blockstream Jade, it's now asking me to generate a pin. This is a pin that just encrypts and protects the hardware wallet itself. So I'm just gonna enter a very simple pin to make it easy. I'm just gonna enter one, two, three. You should obviously do something a little more complicated than that. So I'll be right back after I've done this. Okay, I've just entered my new pin, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's gonna ask me to confirm it. So I'll do that and then come right back. Okay, now I've confirmed my pin. I'll press the button. It says persisting pin data. And now we're all set uh, to import this into the Sparrow wallet. So what we're gonna do now, keeping these Blockstream Jade plugged into the USB port, we're gonna click connected hardware wallet. We're gonna scan for the wallet. It's gonna find the Jade. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be importing, importing the XPUB from the Jade. And we can see here, there's an XPUB here. Basically, we wanna leave this at single sig, leave the script type at native segwit, etc. And we can see we have our XPUB down here. Now we're just gonna click apply. You can choose to add a password to this that will encrypt this wallet on your desktop or laptop. This is only necessary if someone's gonna have access to it. Might be a smart idea from a privacy perspective, but it's important to remember here that what we're doing is we're just importing the XPUB and some other information. We are not importing the private keys. Your private keys, your recovery seed, they remain on the Jade. So I'm gonna choose right now not to use a password. You can use one if other people have access or may have access to your computer. And now we're basically all set. We can see the different tabs here, which we talked about in the Sparrow Wallet video. We have transactions, we have sending Bitcoin, we have receiving Bitcoin, etc. And so what you can do now is you can basically go to here, go to receive, and you can take the first address that pops up. You can copy it right here, copy it to your clipboard, and then you can use that inside the Ledger Live app. And you wanna send some Bitcoin to this address. We can see it's a fresh address. It's never been used before. If you need another address, you can just click get new address and you can generate billions and billions of receive addresses. So the next step, if you wanna be very cautious, is to send a tiny amount of Bitcoin from Ledger, from Ledger Live, uh, from your Ledger hardware wallet to that receive address on your Jade. Once it's been received, and you'll know it's been received because you'll see the progress here under transactions, you'll see it arrive, maybe just send 10,000 sats or a small amount. And then once it's been received, if you wanna be extra cautious, you can wipe your Jade, your factory, you can basically do the factory reset option, which I'll link to in the description notes below. You can then restore the Jade with the same Jade recovery seed. You can reconnect your Jade to Sparrow, opening up a fresh wallet in Sparrow. And then if that tiny amount of Bitcoin is still there that you sent over, then generate a fresh receive address and send over the rest of your Bitcoin from your ledger. Again, what's really protecting your Bitcoin here is that you control your own private keys, that 12 word recovery seed. If that gets exposed or leaked or shown online, then your Bitcoin will immediately be moved by thieves. So you definitely don't wanna take a picture of your 12 word recovery seed. You don't wanna store it in a digital manner. You wanna store it on paper in your house and also probably with a steel or some sort of metal backup in case the house catches on fire. And you can store this in multiple locations as well. But again, if anyone has access to the seed, they have access to your Bitcoin. 
a link to how to perform a factory reset in the description notes below, as well as how to restore a recovery seed, a recovery phrase to Jade. So basically after you do the factory reset, you will do a recovery option rather than generate a new 12 word recovery seed, you'll enter your old recovery seed into the Jade. And again, this is something for all hardware wallets, all decent ones like the cold card and the Jade and even the Trezor and Ledger, they will only let you enter your recovery seed onto the hardware wallet itself, never into your recovery seed onto your desktop or in any web form because that would be someone trying to steal it. If you enjoyed this video and want to go even deeper down the rabbit hole in terms of tutorials and a lot of practical things as we discussed on this in this video, as well as learning how to buy Bitcoin anonymously, how to do coin joins, how to create your own multi-sig vault, etc. I'd also link you to my paid course in the description notes below. If you've watched a lot of my free stuff on YouTube and are ready to take the next step, I would highly recommend this. And a nice option is you're also able to sign up for this course anonymously. You can use a anonymous or pseudonymous email and you can pay with Bitcoin if that's something you want to do as well. So I'll put a link to this course in the description notes below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.